An Austrian court sentenced to life imprisonment in a mental institution, a woman termed the Ice Killer, who chopped up both her lover and husband with a chainsaw and stashed them in the basement of her ice cream parlor. Let's walk through Estabelise Carranza's icy life. Estabelise Carranza was birthed in Mexico City, but moved to Spain with her relatives when she was five years old. She then grew up in Barcelona, Catalonia. She has had dual citizenship in Spain and Mexico since then. Her father, Armando Mendoza Carranza Lopez, is a well-known local author who has written several books on esotericism, shamanism, and the Incans, Mayans, and Aztecs. He was previously a journalist. Angela Zabala, Carranza's mother, is from the Basque country. Carranza also has a younger brother. She established murderous fantasies as a child, even against her own father. At her father's request, Carranza joined the Department of Economics at the University of Barcelona. In court, she spoke out about her complicated relationship with her father, saying that her father didn't allow them to stand out, rather, just exist. Carranza had been engaged to her initial fiancé for five years. Concerning this relationship, it's clear from her subsequent statements that he treated her as if she were his property. Her fiancé ended their relationship after she graduated because, unlike her, he was not looking for a long-term relationship. Her murderous views were now directed at her ex, and she considered tampering with his brake hoses. Carranza moved to Germany shortly after leaving her native Spain. She briefly lived in Munich, where she did work as an au pair for a friend of the family. Carranza had no technical difficulties in her new environment because she had learned German as a child. After her au pair job ended, she stayed in Bavaria and worked in an ice cream shop in the rural town of Nuremberg. There, she met her very first husband, Holger Holz, on this occasion. Holz was 14 years her senior, and a member of the Hare Krishna religious community was selling refrigerators when they met. He proposed to Carranza only a few weeks after their first meeting. Carranza and Holz met in 2002 and relocated to his hometown of Berlin. Shortly after getting married, Holz, now displaying a new side of himself, took all the money Carranza was getting paid as a waitress at the time. He also took her papers when she wanted to depart from him and return to Spain. He is said to have verbally and physically abused his wife. Eventually, Carranza decided to stay and later landed a job in an ice cream shop. She was also bullied and humiliated there. For example, her supervisor would deny her entry to the restroom. Carranza began to entertain revenge fantasies towards him and researched how she could burn his business to the ground. Carranza and Holz moved to Vienna in 2005, where they co-founded the Schlickeria Ice Cream Shop in the Meidling District. Holz contributed a larger amount of money. Carranza's dream of opening her own ice cream shop finally came true. She got to know her partner from a different perspective, as he began to live out his knack for weapon technology as well as first-person shooters, forcing her to join the Hare Krishna organization as well. Carranza met ice cream machine salesperson Manfred Hinterberger shortly after landing in Vienna. She began a relationship with him two years later and filed for divorce against Holger Holz, who continued to reside in the small house they shared. Carranza left the ice cream shop on April 27, 2008 and returned to her home, where she discovered Holz. Her now ex-husband claimed that she had disrespected and harassed him for several hours before she decided to stop. She took out a Beretta pistol and fired three shots behind him while he was playing on the desktop. The cartridges from the 22 caliber gun pierced the back of his head twice and his temple once. The shots were lethal. Carranza's motivation for the crime was twofold. Holes didn't want to leave the apartment they shared, and she owed him loans that could have cost her the ice cream shop to repay. After the murder, Carranza left Holes's dead body on the chair for several days. The heavy smoke caused the first attempts to burn it down to fail. 
She bought a chainsaw from a retail shop a few days later and had them show her how to use it. Carranza used it at home to cut up the body, place it in plastic bags, and at first freeze the parts. She then encased the plastic packages in concrete when her house was given notice in the autumn of 2008. However, because the head was hardened to the bottom of the freezer, she also filled it with concrete. She then hid the tubs in an underground compartment beneath the ice cream shop. Carranza then drove herself to the storage site with the freezer. Carranza transported the freezer herself with the assistance of two unknowingly acquainted people. She explained to anyone who asked about her ex-husband that he had managed to join a cult in India, which was why he had not been declared missing. At this point, Carranza then moved in with her affair partner, Manfred Hinterberger. Hinterberger also contributed a lot of money into the ice cream parlor, which Carranza wouldn't have been able to repay if she hadn't sold the ice cream shop. However, her good fortune didn't last long because Hinterberger was frequently unfaithful. A former partner described Carranza as a subordinate who would do anything for a man. According to her own statements, Hinterberger tempted her to go through a number of plastic procedures, including a nose reduction, a facelift, and lip fillers. Hinterberger refused to fulfill Carranza's desire for children since he already had fully grown children. Carranza then made the decision to murder Hinterberger as well. Carranza did not want to repeat the mistakes of her first murder with that of Hinterberger. She took special practice lessons at the shooting range to improve her marksmanship, while also lining the floors and walls of the room where the murder would take place with plastic tarps before the violent act so that traces could be more easily removed later. The meticulously planned murder occurred during the night of November 21st and 22nd, 2010. The couple came back to their shared home late at night after a journey. Carranza chose to wait for Hinterberger to fall asleep before shooting him four times in the back of the head. She then left the dead body alone for a while before cutting it into separate pieces with the aid of a chainsaw. Hinterberger's body parts were then encased in concrete just as her ex-husband's were in the ice cream parlor's basement freezer. Manfred Hinterberger's disappearance, on the other hand, did not go unnoticed this time. Carranza revealed he was missing four days after the murder after receiving repeated queries from concerned individuals. In December 2010, she began dating Roland R., for whom she became pregnant briefly before her arrest. The house and the Carranza ice cream shop shared a building with other businesses. Another one of the tenants was also required to repair a burst water pipe in the basement. On June 6, 2011, the basement cabin with the number 6, which had previously been locked with a padlock and could not be assigned to any of the tenants' residents, was broken open. Three freezers filled with concrete, a handgun, bricklayers' troughs, and flower pots covered in concrete were discovered upon entry. One was said to have a leg sticking out. The police were quickly summoned and brought various parts of the deceased men to light. Several of Hinterberger's body parts have been found. However, for holes, only his skull was located. Carranza was apprehended in Udine around 7.30 a.m. on June 10, 2011. Austrian authorities immediately requested the suspect's extradition. Meanwhile, a body had been identified as Manfred Hinterberger. Carranza, who was already two months pregnant at this time, confessed to murdering and disposing of the two men during an interrogation. Shortly after, the case made headlines in Spain and Austria. It's been speculated how a small and dainty woman could do the strenuous work of decapitating the bodies, incorporating some parts of the body in concrete, and getting rid of the rest on her own. However, an accomplice who may have assisted in the crime was not identified. Carranza was forced to return to the Austrian judiciary and placed in custody on two murder charges on June 24, 2011. She gave birth to a baby boy on January 11, 2012, who was quickly given to his father. The couple legally wed in the interrogation area of the Vienna prison in March 2012. 
The media outlets reported on the everyday prison life of Carranza shortly after her arrival. With tales about her misadventures in prison, she piqued the interest of the tabloids. Do you believe that someone capable of murderous acts as Carranza would be as submissive to men as they claim she was? We would love to know. Share your thoughts and answers in the comment section below. As always, thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.